floor is zero, uh, Ahmed. So, so today's presentation is going to be about the Mata Island and the revolutionary systems. The first uh, the outline is going to be as follows. First, we are going to deal with experienced revolutionary sisters, and then we will highlight symbols, women, and political practice. And finally, we will, uh, we will highlight practice, gender, and symbolism in the treaty debate. This, the main aim of this presentation is going to restore dignity and prestige to Irish women. We will examine that despite being subject and scored by and content, to her subjugators, Irish women brandished the sword and spear, and they were, they were advancing from conquest to conquest. The symbolic role of women in Irish nationalism has to some extent obscured their practical involvements. This presentation will show how women were icons of nationhood. According to Bogan, the manner in which women are represented in the Irish tradition portrays Ireland as a feminized country. In many of these representations, the female figure is passive, violated, avenged, or inseminated. Uh, she rarely acts on her own behalf. So, we start the presentation with the first part, Experience Revolutionary Sisters. Rich in political experience and endowed with deep insight into the springs of human action, Hannah Skeffington co-founded the Irish Women's Franchise League and in 19, 1912 she set up a suffragist newspaper named The Irish Citizen. In 1817 she gained an audience with President Woodrow Wilson to champion the cause of independence. Her father, I think this is the most important part of the presentation, her father was a member of the British Parliament who opposed any form of rebellion against the British crown. And despite all of that, during the First World War, she avowed that Britain was the enemy of Ireland and not Germany and was therefore imprisoned at Holloway Prison. Once in prison, she, she went immediately on hunger strike, determined of making a martyr of herself. And as a result, she was released just after three days. Carried away by her rebellious impairment, she became a, me a member of Sinn Féin and opposed the treaty that created the Irish Free State because the Irish Parliament was still required to be loyal, loyal to the Crown. To shake the very foundation of the Irish Republic, she resigned after being excluded from policy making and was openly critical of the Valera view of women's issues. Maud McBride, she was born in England, and her father was an officer in the British uh, Army. And despite all of that, she was determined to serve the Irish cause and was unable to join any nationalist organization because they prohibited the membership of women. In 1890s, she campaigned in several countries, in England, in Scotland, in the United States, in France, she championed the cause of Irish independence. In Ireland, she, championed, she, she campaigned against all signs of submission to British rule and created a newspaper named Women in Ireland. Gunn, uh, throughout her journey of rebellion, Gunn admired an Irish officer, John McBride. Why? Because he turned against the English in the Boer Wars in South Africa and she converted into Catholicism to marry him. This alliance of heroes was very popular among nationalists. But she could uh, admire him for other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Physical or... Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, she's based on that. Physical, I don't know. Intellectual... Nationalism. Unlike Clark, Markovich, and Skiffington, she had at first seen some potential in the treaty, thinking that full independence would soon be asserted when British troops uh, had left Ireland. Kathleen Clark, she was born in Limerick into a revolutionary family. Her husband, Tom Clark, was an Irish Republican revolutionary leader. And this is her husband, Tom Clark. <laughs> Uh, 
he was captured during the Irish, uh, during, during the uh, Issa rising. It seems that he was mutilated by his wife, so you can't even see this picture. <laughs> So this is taken from uh, the, uh, the uh, Irish TV series, The uh, Rebellion, mm -hmm. and uh, as we can see, uh, this is Dr. Tom Clark, and he was captured during the Issa Rising, and the British officer asked him, what do you work? And he said, with all pride of the world, the Bacon and President of the Irish Republic. You told me about it last time, you mentioned it in class. How long are you, you seem to be watching the series? Or I'm wrong? No, uh, it was uh, two seasons. Uh -huh. So, how long? How many uh, ten minutes, ten, uh, ten episodes. Ten episodes ten. in the first uh, series, uh, season, and then. Uh, okay. When Tom was arrested, Kathleen took over the leadership position of her husband. It was to her that the boy should refer and defer in Tom's absence. Kathleen knew everything, the chain of command, the bank accounts, and the military strategy. Following Clark's execution, Kathleen took over the management of the IRB funds and was able to keep the independence movement alive. When the Treaty of December 1921 was debated in the day, Kathleen was opposed to it. These women are extraordinary women. They are teachers and examples for every woman. Countess Markovich, she was crafted by heroism, forged by desire, inspired by glory. She was, she was born into a paternalistic aristocratic family, and despite all of that, she set up a nationalist version of the Scouts, and she began organizing military camps and revolutionary education for her boys. But I would sooner to die free than live as a slave. Despite the aristocratic environment in which they lived, they were able to stick to their values. They were able to stick to their values which became an integral part of their DNA. They abandoned the life of comfort and luxury for a life of heroism. When you look, when we examine the life of these women, you, we cannot help but appreciate the spirit of devotion, the spirit of dedication, the spirit which leads a woman to go to the full length of sacrifice for the values she, she, that she holds dear and near to them. In 1913, Markovich joined the Irish Citizen Army, which took men and women on equal terms. By 1916, she was prominent in the women's nationals and the labor movements of Ireland. She was particu particularly close to James Connolly. She drew the maps that were, that were used to plan the rising. She fought with the ICA in the Easter Rising. In the 1921 debate over the treaty with Britain, she spoke against what she saw as invalid compromise. When she died in 1927, the Free State refused to, uh, to honor her as one of Ireland's heroic freedom, fri uh, freedom fighters. Conclusion. These women favor the interests of their nation over the, their own interests. And as a result, Ireland was able to take its place among the nations of Europe. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. <laughs> so,